Let me move on to the broader question of the president's influence in the second term. Faced some tough questions at his press conference this week. And James Carver, I want to show you a few headlines. The president seems to be getting it from left, right, and center. Maureen Dowd uh, in the New York Times, bottom up, bottoms up, lame duck. Peggy Noon in the Wall Street Journal is Obama already a lame duck. Even the Financial Times, Barack Obama captive on uh, Capitol Hill. We have seen the president's poll numbers drift a little bit below 50 right now. So how does he fight this notion this early in the second term that he's already a lame when, when, when the Democrats won in, in 1986, they said that was the end of the Reagan administration. In 1994, when Republicans took the House and then, and then Clinton was reelected, said he's not going to get anything done for the rest of his term. When President Bush lost the House in the, in the Senate in 2006, it was the same thing. Look, there's not a lot of legislation that's going to happen probably between 9, 2016, 30, 9, 2014. The president has enormous influence in a lot of places outside of legislation. And the idea that anybody has as much constitutional power as the president of the United States that somehow is irrelevant in debate, I think, is carrying things. And Mary Matlin, he's still far more popular than Republicans in Congress. So what? That's irrelevant. He's souffled <laughs> in six weeks. He's souffled. He single-handedly wiped out his con congressional majority in the last midterm. He set in place Republican dominance at the state level for decades because we picked up so many 7,000 legislators and 30 governors in control of this, the legislatures in the states, which is the bench, right. uh, back bench for rising stars. And this cycle, he's going to wipe out his Senate, if not the majority, certainly the, well, the critical mass the majority. Republicans should have never uh, lost seats in the Senate in the last election, and they did. And uh, and now that you're having a hard time finding Republicans to even run for the Senate in a, a lot of these Democratic seats, uh, it's not a place people want to be these days. But also, look, uh, James is right. The, pres the power of the presidency, regardless of whom occupies the White House, is enormous. And this question is always asked. And the truth is, the president is a lame duck. The 22nd Amendment is a terrible idea. Uh, you know, <laughs> Oh, uh, uh, term limits always create lame duckhood, and everybody in Congress knows they'll never run with this so guy the, again. That does get to the question of what can get done in the remaining three and a half years of his second term. And, uh, and Senator Dubin, let me bring that to you, because it brings up the issue of immigration reform. Mm -hmm. The president said again yesterday that he believes this can happen this year, but we're seeing a lot of conservative opposition, including from your group, the Heritage Foundation. You're going to be coming out with a new study this week that takes on the costs of immigration reform. Right. Well, the, the president, um, I mean, our country faces very difficult economic and financial problems, but he seems content to bring up emotional, divisive issues, whether it be guns or immigration, and start the fight and play the referee. A lot of Republicans supporting immigration right. reform right well, now as well. Th there are some, uh, and I, I think a lot of them are trying to solve a problem, but the study you'll see from Heritage this week presents a staggering cost of, of another amnesty in our country and the detrimental effects long term that that will have. There's no reason we can't begin to fix our immigration system so that we won't make this problem worse. But the bill that's being presented is unfair to those who came here legally. It'll cost Americans trillions of dollars. It'll make our unlawful immigration system worse. I want to bring everybody else in, but let me press you on one question, this question of cost. You believe it'll probably cost in excess of $2 trillion, two and a half Much more trillion than dollars. But the Congressional Budget Office, the Cato Institute, other Republicans have said, no, immigration reform is actually going to increase economic growth, increase wages, because it brings more people into the workforce. Your response? Well, CBO said Obamacare wouldn't cost us anything. They're basically puppets of the Congress and the assumptions that they put in the bill. Heritage is the only organization that has done an analysis of the cost. Unlawful immigrants make up about 2 percent of our GDP. And they consume most of that. And if you consider all the factors of amnesty and unlawful immigration, the cost will be in the trillions of dollars over the lifetime of these Boy. unlawful well, immigrants. Well, you know, I remember when I was in the House of Representatives, I voted for a 1980s Six. immigration initiative, 1986. Right. Ronald Reagan Some gave seven. amnesty to three million undocumented workers. I think, Senator, with all due respect, if the Republican Party wants to stay relevant, in the Electoral College with Hispanic voters, uh, they've got to be moderate on immigration. And I think what is happening today is the Senate has started out with a realistic bill. Although I'm, you know, as a Hispanic, my beef right now is the path to citizenship. I think it's 13 years, right. it's excessive. It's like becoming a it's like, like the cost is huge. There's all these uh, trip wires you have to do, you know, so I'm, 
You're I'm not going to get anything more liberal through the Congress, no. though. Well, no, I, I, probably, I realize that, especially right. when it gets to the House. Right. But, you know, my hope is that uh, a good part of the Republican moderate party is moving in the right direction. And I think if Senator DeMint and his organization saw that this is not just an important policy change for the country and the cost, Senator, but, you know, immigrants contribute to our economy. But, Mary, they, this does seem to be splitting the Republican Party right now, increasingly. Right, but that's a false argument, that the Hispanic vote is contingent upon the single issue. It was for legal Hispanics here, are legally, it's the fifth most important issue. It is a gateway issue. There needs to be better articulation, <clears throat> as Senator DeMint has tried to do, and Senator Rubio tried to do. They disagree on the assumptions in, in your, the dynamic scoring, as they, they say is absent. <laughs> From your, uh, from your study, but at least we're talking about real measures. We're not talking about the Christmas tree stuff that the president passed so easily, the college and things that everybody agrees with. It's a real approach with differences in the party, but the, if we do this because we think it's politically palatable as opposed to good for the country, and yes, it does take 13 years, and yes, it is as long as it takes to become a Jesuit. <laughs> I think it would be worth becoming a Jesuit, an American <laughs> citizen, to follow the trip wires the, and requirements. Look, look it, it does divide the Republican Party. There's just no question about it. There, there are people in the party who can do math and who say, you know, this is a, a huge, fastest growing group in the country, and we can't afford to alienate them. And then there are people who say, but wait, I represent a congressional district that is 100 percent Republican and that uh, if I vote for this bill, I'm going to get in so much trouble in my primary that uh, that I can't vote. For and, the bill. and James, one of the things you saw this week is even Marco Rubio, a big proponent of the bill, saying he doesn't think it can pass right. the House. Right. And, 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 and look, let's go to the raw politics here. Let Cato and right. Heritage and CEO right. fight this out over here. The raw politics are this does divide the Republican Party. Right. I was listening to Rush Limbaugh, all right, and he made the case. He I said he was telling. That. That's <laughs> always, does, a good always sign. look. We're Democrats. We listen to everybody. <laughs> and he you said, "Look, you're hear. going, and this is what you hear from a political standpoint. You're going to bring all these people in. You're going to make them legal. You're going to help them do that, and they're not going to vote for you. And you have four million people that sit back every election because we're doing this. So the, the, the Limbaughian, and this is a lot of other Republicans' calculation, is." You're not going to get credit for this anyway. The Democrats are going to get the credit, and you're going to have a lot more Democratic voters. I don't say that I agree with that, but that's where the, the, the politics hits but, the ground, and there's a lot of opposition to the Republican Party. There. Well, conservatives support immigration, and lawful immigration, mm -hmm. particularly if it's merit-based, is going to mm -hmm. build our country. Immigrants built our country. One of the primary reasons we oppose this bill, it's going to take away those opportunities that America gives the folks who come here unlawfully. But the, the way we've calculated the cost, and I've read the study over the weekend, it, it is, I don't think anyone can argue with it. If you consider all the factors related to the, the amnesty, and believe me, this is comprehensive, that it will have a negative long-term impact on our gross domestic product. So uh, we just want Congress for once to count the cost of a bill. Okay, They're notorious for underestimating the cost and, and not no understanding the consequences. But, but Senator, of the how can you say an amnesty right. after it takes 13 years? Uh, the, the citizen tr track is, is, is very costly. You have to jump through a lot of hoops. Now, I agree. Background checks, make them learn English, uh, make sure that uh, they, they <clears throat> embrace American values. But, you know, to say it's an amnesty, uh, it's not an amnesty. Well, it's it's a path to citizenship. Right. And, 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 and also, Senator, there's legal, there's legal <clears throat> immigration provisions in this bill, legal, for thousands of engineers that want right. to stay here, I mean, it's, software engineers that would be no, able to stay. No, it's no accident that the business right. community is lobbying like crazy for this bill, that the agricultural community is lobbying right. like crazy the for this bill. The AFL-CIO is for it. The Chamber of Commerce is for it. The big ag companies and the Chamber of Commerce is for it. The AFL-CIO. CIO is for. And well, now we're going to have to take a quick break. I'm just going to repeat the question. Do you, do, do you block this legislation this year or not? Um, well, it's difficult to say. I think if people read the bill, uh, that it will be blocked. Because once you get into it, just like Obamacare, it is not what, the way it's being advertised.